Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we wanted to go over the differences you're gonna find when it comes to engine oil. Let's get into it. Okay, so just to let you know, this is gonna be a super long video. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and sit down and buckle up, Buttercup. Here we go. Now, one of the first things that I wanna mention right off the bat is that this demonstration isn't supposed to be brand specific. Yeah, you might see a lot of the same brands, but it's not necessarily about that. It's more just what we had on hand. Now, the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about are the numbers that you're gonna see on every oil jug, and that's the viscosity rating. So now, if you look right down the line, you're gonna see all sorts of different numbers on these jugs. And the more you look at them, the more confusing it may seem. Now, we'll go with this one, for instance. You're gonna see a five, W and then a 30. The reason why this has two is because it's a multi-grade viscosity oil. The reason for that, and the reason why it actually has a W on there, is because the first number is the winter weight or the cold weather weight. That's gonna be a lower number usually. And then of course, when you get to the second number, that's gonna be a higher number, and that's when the engine's actually at operating temperature, which is approximately 212 uh, Fahrenheit. You might also see bottles with just one number on it, and that's called straight weight oil. And that's only for specific applications. So before we get into the differences between viscosity and flow rate, let's continue on with viscosity. If you were to look at this right here, like we were saying before, you're gonna have a five, and then a W, and then a 30 on this particular application. Seems a little weird though. Why would it go from being thinner when it's cold to thicker when it's warm? If you were to think about it, what if your vehicle was to start off at like 40 weight oil? nice and thick, and that's when the engine's cold. It's probably gonna have a hard time pushing that oil around. And then as the engine heats up, when it needs more lubricity, the oil's gonna be super thin at that point because if the oil kept getting thinner as it heated up, that would obviously cause an issue and you would hear engine noise. Now, is there an oil viscosity that's gonna be able to cover all these vehicles? I wanna go with no. Each manufacturer is gonna have its own oil viscosity rating that they recommended per engine, per vehicle. So now we're gonna compare that to flow rate because viscosity and flow rate are two different things like I said before and you're not gonna find that on this bottle. Flow rate basically comes down to how fast that um, oil can flow through the system in any given rate of time. So if you're going by a minute, they need to know exactly how much flow or how much oil is gonna be able to flow through that engine, through the filter and everything, per a given amount of time. Continuing on with the front of the bottle, usually kind of near where the oil weight is, you're gonna see a little certification right here. And this just says American Petroleum Institute certifies this for gasoline engines. Now, if you were to look at the other side of the jug, you're probably gonna see another certification. And this one's from the API service. And what you're gonna notice is it has a little letter or a couple little letters. This one says SN plus. So now looking at these letters, you're gonna generally see an S and then a letter following it. The later in the alphabet that that letter is, is the newer that the oil type is. So it actually started way back in the day with SA, and then SB, and then so on. Now we're at the point where it's SN plus. So this is pretty much the newest type of oil, and it has the most amount of additives, which is gonna be necessary for almost all newer engines. Now we have a little chart here that's straight from the API website. So with that said, if you were to look down here, you can see different age groups of vehicles as they move along throughout you know, history. In older vehicles, they used an SA oil, like I said before. And then SB, SC, and so on, up and through the 80s. You know what I mean, you got SE. Anything in red right here is considered obsolete. So, if you've had oil sitting around inside your garage or up on a shelf inside your shed for a super long period of time, and you happen to pull it off and blow off the dust, and you're like, oh, 530 oil, this should be fine. Well, no, it's not, because it's not up to the rating that newer cars are. Unless, of course, you're working on an older car, in which case, you know, you do you, boo-boo. So now as newer cars progressed up and through the 2000s, as you can tell, there's lots of different type of oil grades that were needed. With that said, to find out the best type of oil to use would be located right inside of your owner's manual. Another possible way you can figure out what your oil viscosity rating should be is right underneath the hood on that oil cap. Now, something you're gonna wanna pay attention to, especially if you have a GM vehicle, is this right down here. It has to say Dexos approved. Dexos oil came out back in approximately 2010 and it was made specifically for GM vehicles. In about 2015, they came out with the second Dexos approval. So with that said, if you were to get Dexos 1 approved oil and you had a vehicle that's newer than 2015, you're using the wrong oil. If you had a 2014 vehicle and you got the Dexos approved 2, you could use that oil inside that engine because it has a higher approval rating. So now let's talk about the differences between conventional oil 
semi-synthetic oil, and fully synthetic oil. So now if we're talking about conventional oil, as the name implies, that's traditional oil. This is the type of oil that they've been using for a long, long time in automobiles and other type of gasoline engines. The reason why it's considered conventional oil is because it was made the conventional way. If you were to move along to synthetic or even semi-synthetic, they, they had to change that refining process. They had to do a lot more things and add more additives. Conventional oil, of course, would be more suited for older vehicles, which don't necessarily require um, the latest standards of synthetic oil and such. And something to note would be conventional oil is much cheaper than synthetic oil overall. But you have to change your oil twice as often. So now let's jump right over the semi-synthetic and go right to the full synthetic. Synthetic oil is different than conventional oil because it has to be chemically and physically modified. Now due to this extra refining process, the oil turns out to be purer and cleaner overall, which of course then leads to the fact that you can go a little bit longer on that service interval. But then again, of course, all that extra refining and extra processes and additives are gonna make it cost much more than the conventional oil. So let's slide on back down the chart here and we're gonna go to a semi-synthetic oil now. What's the difference between semi-synthetic oil and the synthetic or even conventional? Well, it's kind of right in the middle, right? Right here. The reason for that is because it's semi-synthetic. It has some synthetic oil in it and it has some of the regular conventional oil in it. Is it a 50-50 mix? I don't necessarily know exactly how they do it, but they came up with their own reasons for why they did it. The best thing about it though, is it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. As newer vehicles progressed, it became more apparent that you needed the use of at least a semi-synthetic oil. But overall, new vehicles, or even newer vehicles, are gonna require full synthetic, like I said before. So now most of these oils you're gonna find are either between 75 and 90% crude oil based. And then after they've been refined and whatnot, they add those additives, and that's gonna make up the rest of that 100%. Now if we're trying to decide between conventional or even synthetic oil, to determine approximately how long you can go, well, synthetic oil might last a little bit longer, and that's a proven fact. But you have to start thinking about something else, which would be the filtration for this. Let's say you spend a whole bunch of money on some great synthetic oil because you can't wait to do right by your engine. That's awesome. But then you go ahead and you buy the cheapest oil filter you can find. Inside that oil filter, you're probably not gonna find what you're looking for. It's not gonna have the right filtering inside, and it's gonna end up breaking down over time, and it's not gonna filter the engine oil the way that it needs to to be able to get out those contaminants. Now some people have the question, can I switch back and forth between conventional and synthetic oils? The answer of course would be yes. You can do whatever you want, it's your engine. Is it gonna cause and affect anything? Well, maybe it will, but more than likely it won't. Would it cause damage? No, it probably isn't gonna cause damage unless you were using synthetic and you're used to going that five, seven, I don't know, 10,000 miles on every oil change interval and then you switch to the conventional oil, which should have a much smaller service interval, but you continued with that five, seven, 10,000 mile interval. With that said, and like I said before, the longer that that oil is sitting inside the crankcase, it's building up more of those gases, it's uh, filling up with even more contaminants from unburnt stuff getting mixed in with the oil. Conventional oil just isn't meant to hold on to that for a super long period of time. So it's gonna cause breakdown inside the engine, that little pitting that I was talking about before. So to reiterate, synthetic oil does not cause engine noise or engine oil leaks. You'll only probably notice it because of the wear your engine already has. So now let's talk about the difference between regular synthetic oil and higher mileage synthetic oil. What's the reasoning for it? It's a great question. With that said, the reason why you'd wanna use synthetic oil or even high mileage oil is because as your engine becomes older in miles, I don't wanna say age because time doesn't really matter necessarily, the parts are gonna become worn. There's gonna be larger clearances than what would have normally been inside that vehicle. And like I said before, if you were to use synthetic oil, it's super thin, right? And as the vehicle gets older, those gaskets and stuff are gonna to start to get dry and brittle and the oil's gonna to try to find its way out anywhere it can. With the high mileage oil, it has special additives in it that are actually gonna help those gaskets on the inside of the engine to make it so they kind of re-soften back up. And that's gonna help prevent against oil leaks and of course, engine wear over time. So now another question that you might ask yourself is when should I switch my engine oil over to a high mileage oil? Well, the answer for that would be approximately 75,000 miles. At that point, your engine's completely broken in Everything's kind of moving the way that it should be, and the tolerances are overall gonna be a little bit more than what they would have normally been. Of course, those seals, they'd be a little bit more worn as well, maybe a little bit dry and brittle. 
So you'd switch to the high mileage oil, that's gonna have extra additives in there and it's gonna help prolong the life of your engine overall. Now some of the reasons why maybe you'd wanna change your oil. Well, over time, the combustion gases inside your engine will sneak past the rings on your pistons and they'll start to combine with the oil inside the engine. When this happens, the oil inside the engine becomes acidic. Basically, it's gonna be sulfuric and carbonic acidity. And when that happens, it's gonna obviously break down the seals on the inside of the engine, which are very important. And it also has the possibility of actually pitting the inside of your engine. So now going over on your oil changes, like I said, you're gonna have that acidic oil inside there and it's gonna make those seals dry rotted and brittle. When that happens, you're gonna have oil that likes to try to seep out. If you're using conventional oil, overall it's gonna be a little bit thicker than the uh, synthetic oil even though maybe you have the same API rating that says 5W20 or 0W20. The regular oil or semi-synthetic oil, like I said, is just gonna be a little bit thicker and you're not really necessarily gonna notice those leaks. But if you were to go from using regular oil to switching to synthetic, maybe you've got you know, 100,000 miles or 150,000 miles or you know, a nice older Corolla with 300,000 miles and you decide that maybe you wanna to switch to synthetic because you love this car and you wanna keep it around for a while. Who wouldn't? They're great cars. With that said, what you're probably gonna notice is some oil leaks starting, and you're probably even gonna notice a little bit of engine noise that maybe you didn't hear before. The reason for the leak would be, of course, those seals are dry and brittle, and the thin oil can push right through. It's not necessarily because synthetic oil causes leaks or anything like that. That's very untrue. It just kind of finds those little leaks because it's much thinner. Now, the reason why I said if you were to switch to the synthetic oil, you'd probably hear engine noise and oil leaks. Well, like I said, if you're using the conventional oil, it's gonna dry up those gaskets because it's petroleum based. When that happens, it's gonna cause tiny imperfections. And yeah, maybe the regular oil isn't gonna find its way out through there. If you switch to the synthetic, it's gonna be thinner. It's gonna have a higher flow rate, so it's gonna be able to move easier. It's gonna find those tiny little imperfections and it's gonna take advantage of that and make its way out of the engine. Now, the reason why you might hear that noise using synthetic oil over the regular uh, semi-synthetic or even basic oil is because of the flow rate. So the clearances of all those small parts inside of the engine, they're used to having a decent amount of oil that's going in between there, causing lubricity and kind of keeping them apart from chattering. If you were to use synthetic, it's much thinner. It's gonna make its way through here quicker, faster, and you're gonna have those metal parts just kind of making a little bit of noise. Like I said, you didn't hear it before because you were using the thicker oil before. And I'm not talking about oil viscosity. So now let's talk about the engine oil pressure. And when I'm talking about that, I wanna make sure that you understand that I'm not necessarily talking about the pressure coming directly from that oil pump. A lot of the pressure that you're gonna realize either building or not being there is actually due to the fact that the clearances inside the engine are changing over time. That's bound to happen. It's a wear and tear item. Now, when these clearances change, what you're gonna to happen to notice is probably maybe a little bit of noise coming from the engine. Even though maybe you're keeping up with that recommended service interval and you're using the proper oil viscosity. The reason for that is like I said, as those parts uh, wear, the clearances are gonna come from being very small and they're gonna get larger. Of course, it's not gonna be on this scale because I can't make them with my hands. You won't be able to see anyway. As those clearances get larger, the flow of the oil is gonna change as well because it's gonna be able to flow right through that big old hole much easier than the small hole, right? With that said, you're gonna hear a little bit of engine noise. Another way that that can go is maybe your engine's new or on the newer side, and for some reason you decided to go with a higher viscosity rating. Maybe your engine's rated for 0W20 because it's a brand new vehicle, and you decide maybe, I don't wanna use 0W20. Synthetic, it costs me more. I'm gonna go with regular plain old 530. Obviously that's not a great idea. The reason for that is because now that oil is going to have to try harder to squeeze through those low clearance areas inside the engine. So you're going to have a higher amount of oil pressure. So now either of these cases, of course, would be very bad for the engine. And for the purpose of this video, I would only go with the recommendation of your actual vehicle manufacturer, especially if you have a vehicle that has variable valve timing. It could cause detrimental damage to your engine by using the wrong oil viscosity. Do your own research. So now there are four major functions of oil in general. You're gonna of course have the lubricating factors, obviously. You're gonna have the cleaning factors because inside your engine, it's a very severe environment. There's lots of things going on. There's mechanical parts moving around. And of course there's extreme heat. So there's gonna be contaminates that are gonna be kind of settling in and you need those to kind of move around. Another purpose of it is to also relieve heat. Inside that engine, like I said, there's a lot of heat. 
Another thing, of course, it helps with the seals of the engine. Helps prevent them from getting dry and brittle and cracking over time. So as far as additives, you have detergents. Of course, that's gonna be the cleaner. There's also gonna be a dispersant. That's to help get those contaminants loosened up from clinging to parts and move them around inside the oil. That way there, when you drain out the oil or it's flowing through the filter, it's gonna get filtered out. Other than that, you're gonna have antioxidants. If the oil oxidizes, you're gonna get viscosity increase and probably a little bit more wear. As far as anti-wear, we also have something that's gonna form a chemical layer on the medical parts to help reduce that wear. And then of course, there's a viscosity modifier, which makes the oil thicker with heat rather than the normal thinner when warm. Now, so far we've been talking about gasoline engine oils. There are other types of engines though, aren't there? You have diesel engines. Those type of engines aren't gonna use the same type of oil that your gasoline engine's gonna use. It's gonna be a little bit different, it's gonna be refined differently, and more than likely, when you look at those numbers on the front of the bottle, you're gonna notice those numbers are much higher. That's because diesel engines tend to run a lot hotter than gasoline engines. Gasoline engines need three things to run. They need an ignition source, they need air, and fuel. With all three of those things, they'll be able to run. Diesel engines, necessarily, don't need to have an ignition source. The way that they actually run is by compression. And that's because inside of a diesel engine, you have the, the cylinder, right? And then you have your piston that's gonna be coming up. As that piston is coming up, it's creating pressure, pressure, pressure. And it creates so much pressure that it actually spontaneously combusts the air and fuel mixture that's inside of that cylinder, which then drives the uh, piston down, shoots up the next one, which pushes that one up, makes that extreme amount of compression, <laughs> come shooting back down. With that compression comes a tremendous amount of heat. So with that said, would you be able to use a gasoline rated oil, something like this, you know, 5W30 inside of a diesel engine? No, definitely not. You'll end up causing detrimental damage to your engine. And it's not necessarily recommended to go vice versa, by the way. Now, when it comes time to choosing your oil, you're probably gonna notice there's a lot of different brands to choose from. They all have their promises. They all tell you what they may or may not do, and that's great. Overall, they all pretty much have the same refining process. The difference would be, the amount of additives that they choose to add. So is it a good idea to switch from different types or different brands? Probably not, like I said. They make a decision on what type of additives they wanna add and maybe your vehicle's used to one over another. So keep it as consistent as possible. So I know this is a lot of information to try to take in, so I'm gonna try to break it down for you. When it comes to brand of oil, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You do you, boo-boo. Pick one you like and stick with it. When it comes to the viscosity rating or the type of oil, whether it be conventional or synthetic, I would go by the manufacturer's specific recommendation. The reason for that is because they know exactly what type of oil the engine should be using, and they're also gonna give you a little listing on the interval you should be doing. You wanna stick to that interval, and that's gonna make sure that your engine lasts for a very long time. So now it's gonna be super important, and probably the most important, is how you dispose of your used oil. It's not just something that you can dispose of willy-nilly. You can't just dump it into the ground, or bury it somewhere, or put it down the sink. You definitely don't wanna put it down a drain of any sort, because it has contaminants, and of course it can pollute the environment. Nobody wants that. You have to make sure that you recycle it properly, and they're gonna take care of all the messy work. So when you're doing your oil change, it's important to put it inside a nice bucket like this. And then of course, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and pour it right into the bucket that you got your new oil from. Okay friends, so we tried to make a nice educational video for you about engine oils. Hopefully you learned a little something. If there's something that I missed or something that you wanna talk about, leave it in the comments section below because I'd love to hear from you. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While I've still got you here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and ring the bell that way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.